Star Citizens, it's your boy Lando here. I wanted to do a quick video, maybe not so quick, we'll see how it turns out, but I wanted to do a video where we talk about some of what I think are the most underrated ships in Star Citizen, and maybe, maybe we'll hit all of the ones I think are underrated, but some kind of ebb and flow. So yeah, I have a few ships. I'm going to hop into hangar.link. If you are wondering where I do all this stuff at, it's hangar.link slash fleet slash canvas. If you go to hangar.link uh, or just Google that, you can find the same place where I look at all these ships in, in, in great detail or whatever. Um, it's a great, great website. So we're going to go in. We're going to look at them. I'm going to talk about why I think they're underrated. And then, yeah, we'll just go from there. The ship contest is still going on until February 29th. So like, dislike, uh, subscribe and, and comment in order to enter, right? Uh, you can like or dislike, you don't have to do both. Uh, and yeah, that's it for that. That's all I'll say about the ship contest. I'm, I'm tired of talking about the ship contest, but yes, uh, that's still going on. So if you want to enter, go ahead, but let's just hop in and get started on this underrated ships. The underdogs, that's what I call them, the underdogs. Let's go. All right. So first up is actually not a ship at all. <laughs> Did I trick you? Does that count as tricking you if I say ships and then there's a vehicle in there? I'm going to say no. So yeah, we're going to go with no, but it's not all vehicles, I promise. So Centurion. So why do I think this is underrated right so one of the reasons i think the centurion is underrated is because everybody's like ballista 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 get a ballista if you want to you know do anything where you're defending the ground right and i do think that the ballista is the better buy but that doesn't mean the centurion is not worth the buy right and should you purchase it in game i don't know i can't really say for now like Generally, I say buy vehicles in game, right? And I think that's the general rule for most people, right? But when it comes to expensive vehicles like this, these are kind of pushing the line. It depends on what you want to use it for, right? So for me, if I have a vehicle like this, I'm expecting it to blow up a lot, right? So this is what I don't think, I, I don't think a lot of people take into account when they think about how much their vehicle costs, right? How many times are you actually going to claim it, right? So if I have, if, I, if we're talking about LTI, right? Which I don't think LTI is gonna be as big of a deal as people make it out to be, but I do still think it's, it's great to have. So if I buy this ship with LTI, I don't wanna have to spend $12,000 on this ship like to buy a new one or to keep LTI on it right? Or, to, or not to keep LTI, but to keep insurance on it if I don't have LTI, right? So I would only get this ship if I could get it with LTI, if I'm going to purchase it outright. But the thing is, this ship is going to get blown up a lot. And I don't want like to have a maintenance expense for it, like I just said. So like, I don't want to have to pay for insurance for it. Like I said, I would only get it with LTI. But I... I mean, every time something blows up, you have to you have to either wait or pay to claim it, right? But the, the wait for the Centurion is what, like a minute, two minutes or something like that? So I don't really have to claim it that much. I just need to make sure that I have insurance on it so I could keep bringing it back every time it gets blown up. So that's the first part. The value part of it, if you get it with LTI, I think it is still, it can be worth the money that you spend on it outside of the game. Am I saying go run and purchase a Centurion? No, I unless you can. I still think it's one of those ships where you need to get it at a discount, right? You should be getting. You shouldn't be paying any any more than ninety bucks for a Centurion. On top of that, you need to have LTI. That being said, the Centurion itself, the the quality of the ship, right? The Ballista is. This thing is gonna pretty much it's it's complete air defense right it's going to send a bunch of missiles at whatever is trying to fly above right and hopefully 
it's in range, right? Because like if you got an A2 coming, that thing's range is so crazy that you can bomb with the A2 before the ballista even has a chance to hit it, right? And the Centurion's range is even less than the ballista, right? So there's certain ships that neither one of these are gonna do well against, but a ballista, of course, is gonna fare, fare better against something like an A2 or an A1, right? But the Centurion can knock some fighters some some light fighters out of the sky very very quickly and i don't think that a lot of people pay attention to that because they're so worried about the a2 yes if you're in jump town you probably should be more worried about an a2 like if you're in a well-known place where a2s are known to like pop up all the time then you're probably going to want to go with the ballista but if you're not then you're probably going to want to go with the centurion because you're less likely to see the ballista. Now, they both are meant to complement each other, so you should have both. If you buy one, you should buy the other. But I'm just saying that I don't think enough people give the Centurion its credit because I think people are so centered on the ballista. And I do think both of them are what you really need to like defend a base. And this is gonna be even more important going forward because going forward, we're all gonna have homes. We're all gonna have bases. We're all gonna have towns or whatever. Like there's gonna be construction in the game where you can build your own outposts and stuff like that. And I think people are gonna wanna have these like peppered around, right? Pep you're gonna have two or three of these and maybe two or three ballistas around your base to keep, you know, keep it safe. But remember, we're also gonna have planetary defense. We're gonna have shields around our, well, at least at least in the lawful areas we'll have planetary defense then there's the medium law areas where it's like it's not uee protected but it's still protected by like some guild and then there's like the lawless areas where there's no no defense right higher risk high reward and all that stuff the stuff that top happy was talking about in uh, the last citizen con but if you are in a protected area maybe you don't need this as much maybe you can just rely on you know maybe something smaller maybe you get the storm and storm aa or something like that or maybe even the 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 cyclone aa you know and you know the cyclone with the guns on it you could probably settle for something smaller but if you're in those medium medium shielded areas where it's not as shielded as like uee then you're probably gonna want something like the centurion right because you're, you're, you're going to have some protection, but you're not going to have as much. And I think, of course, if you're in the lawless, you're going to want multiples of both of these, right? So, yeah, I just think people pay more attention to the Centurion. You might I also remember the, the prices, the in-game prices are going to change. They're going to change in 3.23. And my guess is they're going to keep changing as we get closer to the launch of Star Citizen and Squadron 42. Because I think they're over the part where they're like everybody can just have everything and test everything and so much and, and it's shrinking the amount of things that need to be tested is shrinking which means they don't have to allow these things to be cheap in the game anymore so that they can be tested now things can start to move towards their original price and i think when we get to the end the end prices of in-game things people are going to be surprised at how high the prices are for these things and so I don't want anybody to get caught off guard. So yes, I spent a lot of time on the Centurion, but I also think it's one of the ones that needed the most amount of time because it's the hardest one to convince people of. So let's move on to the next one. The Ballista. <laughs> so you might not have seen this one coming because I, I talked about the Centurion in relation to the Ballista, but the main thing I want to talk about with the Ballista is how much people keep saying to buy it in-game. I do think out of all the in-game ships, I think there's two ships that are going to go up very high in price. I think the, the tank is going to get better as they keep doing passes on the tank to make it like a more viable thing. And I think that's going to get more expensive. And I think the Ballista is going to be the other one that gets more expensive. Now, I mean more expensive in game. I don't think the out the out of game prices are going to change on this um, because Ballista is already very expensive. But I do think at some point people are going to wish that they bought the Ballista outside of the game because of how expensive it's going to get inside the game. And I think it, it's going to get so expensive that people are going to get upset. Now, what am I basing this off of? I'm, I'm basing it off of, like I said before with the Centurion, I'm basing it off of the idea that 
what who needs these ships right like it's gonna be people what these these ships are gonna get blown up a lot right these ships are also providing something that a lot of other ships just can't provide like there's not there's there's nothing that's going to protect your base better as a vehicle than the ballista and the centurion right we might end up with like point based defense right where we have like something built into the ground that can shoot that that can shoot aa and stuff like that but you can move the ballista like if i if I, this base doesn't need protecting the one down there no, does i can move this to the one down there right i just think that base defense is going to become so much more important than it is now and i don't want people to just base their purchasing decisions off what they can do now now am i telling you again to go go out and buy a ballista with your real money no i'm just saying track it same thing with the centurion track the in-game prices before you just assume that you don't need to purchase one out out of game track the in-game prices see if they're starting to tick upward and if they get if you start seeing that they're getting to a point where you're like oh this isn't a cheap in-game ship anymore then i would just purchase one right and again same thing with us like i said with the centurion you should be getting lifetime insurance on this and you should try to get it for at least 30 or 40 dollars cheaper than its listed price all right okay i promise no more vehicles <laughs> that was it that was it all right technically i would count that as one so our first actual ship the santak yai so i drove this and i only i think i only drove it twice or drove i flew it twice um and it was both times it was in the same day and it was for less than an hour because i was really just trying to get the review done and it wasn't mine it was it was a, a i i rented one and the first time and then the second time i borrowed one from somebody because they had a different skin and i thought it was cool but <laughs> generally i think the santak yai is too expensive and i think that's part of why it is underrated and i even think maybe i may i may have underrated it in my review of it because the santak yai and the car to all both have this issue with being like huge targets right and i think being a huge target isn't that big of a deal when you have the speed and the maneuverability of the santak yai and the car to all because these are some of the fastest ships in the game and some of the most maneuverable ships in the game, both of them. So yes, in order to balance the fact that they're fast and super maneuverable, you're going to need the, 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 the cross section to be a little bigger. It's just a, it just makes sense balance wise. Now I, I will say, I don't like, I don't like the way the sound is that comes from those. So I do hope in the future, they allow you to turn that sound off. But generally, I think I'm gonna love flying these and I have been heavily weighing purchasing one or the other. What I'm doing is I'm waiting until, until 3.23, I'm gonna fly both of them and I honestly think I'm gonna purchase one outside of the game. I normally do not buy combat ships, but I had so much fun flying the Santok Yai and so much fun flying the car to all that I think that I'm gonna buy one. and. I, I, right now I'm leaning towards so when I did my reviews right the car to all on paper should be the better ship than the Santak Yai and I think it's like based on I can't remember exactly what I said in my review but it was like based on a little bit I think the, the speed I think it was faster I think the Santak Yai is slower but more maneuverable and no the Santak Yai is faster but less maneuverable than the car to all the car to all is way faster i think the or no the car to wall is the most maneuverable i think it's the most maneuverable ship in the game it's or it's up there it's in like top five and but it still maintains more speed than the santak yai maintains maneuverability so on paper the car to wall should be better but i like the way the santak yai looks more I, I like when i look at the santak yai i'm like that is a ship i would get in and i would fly every single day so I fought with the Santak Yai, and when I fought with it, the wings kept coming off very easily. Now, I, I think there was somebody in my comments that said it. Uh, excuse me, I forgot what your name was. 
but they talked about the Santak Yai and they said I might have been confusing it with the Car 2 Wall. Now, I wasn't confusing it, but I may have had a, a more one-off experience because after revisiting it and seeing what other people are saying about the Santak Yai and the Car 2 Wall, it is very clear that the Car 2 Wall loses its wings much easier than the Santak Yai. So I'm also thinking like, well, maybe, maybe I just did have a one-off experience and maybe I should, like should fly it more. So I'm gonna wait till 3.23, gonna fly both of them. And honestly, this might be the only fighter I actually purchase outside of the game. Now, here's the thing. I'm gonna buy a CCU to it because I don't know what other fighters are gonna come out, but I will definitely be purchasing a, C a CCU to one of these two because I do think it's going to be my preferred fighter, one of these two, unless something else comes out and just blows them away. Because I do, I think I value speed and maneuverability. I want both, but I don't want like to lose something crazy for it. Like I don't want to have like a hundred, um, like a hundred hull HP, you know, like the lowest hull HP in the game just because I have this speed and maneuverability. So. I have to do some more estimates and stuff, but yeah, I'm leaning towards the Santak Yai. So, uh, and I, I just, I, I honestly think it's underrated because of how expensive it is. So it's kind of earning that being underrated part, but I think a lot of people also just don't like alien ships. And I think this is one of the few alien ships that you should give a try. Like it has decent weapons. The speed maneuverability is insane. Yeah. So if you, If you know me, then you know that I think this ship is going to be one of the best advanced starter ships in the game. And what do I mean by advanced starters? I think I think it's going to be a ship that if you start the game with it, you can end the game with it. Like it's not it's not technically a starter ship. It's two hundred dollars. Right. And I think that's part of another reason why it's like underrated, because it's so expensive. But with what you get. You, I mean, it can carry a little bit of cargo. It can do repair. It's super tough. Like it's armored so that it can land and, you know, repair vehicles or grab ve or grab whatever it needs to and go, right? So, and it has, of course, like the, 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 it has the little robots that go out and do the repair for you, right? I just think this ship is just, I think it's underrated. I just don't think people are looking at repair gameplay that much. And I, I, and for good reason, right? It's not in the game heavily right now. I think all you can do right now is get like the the the, the beam attachment and, and repair a little bit. Um, I'm not even sure if that's in 3.2.2.1, which is the current patch as I make this video, but somebody can check that. Leave a, leave a comment if it's currently in game where you can, can grab that. I think you can, I, it might, I, I think the last time I tried it was PTU though. So yeah, the, I think this is going to be one of those ships where people are going to overlook it because it's not the sexiest ship. It's not a ship that like most people even are aware about, but I think this one's going to slide under the radar. And then all of a sudden people are going to be like, where is that? This Vulcan is kind of cool. Actually. I like this. Um, but just get a skin because that skin is ugly. I know it's military colors, but I'm sorry. I was in the military. I still think that's ugly. I don't know. I don't, I'm not a big fan of the pea green. It's not, I've just never been a fan of it. All right, but let's move on. The Zeus Mark II CL. Now this one, I'm not 100% sure is underrated, but I want to talk about it because of the relation to the C1. The C1 I think is overrated and I think the CL is underrated. And I think it's because the C1 is going to be a little faster than the CL, but until the CL comes out, we can't really compare that because we don't know if that speed difference is gonna be negligible or if it's gonna be massive, right? But as I looked at the CL, right? And now I have to I have to say, right? If you looked at my fleet video, then you know I no longer have or then you you would think that I have a CL, but if you've been paying attention since then, I have since upgraded my CL to a 400i because I needed to do time sensitive cargo. So it's a whole different thing, but I did have a CL in the fleet and I still think it's underrated. And I do still think I'll end up owning one depending on what other ships come out right between now and when the game releases. But the CL can carry, I think 128 SEU of cargo, whereas 
the Mercury Star Runner, which I often compare it to as far as just for cargo, right? The Mercury Star Runner is faster. The Mercury Star Runner is more maneuverable. I think it has more guns. Um, but I do think that this, this being able to carry more cargo, it gives people uh, out from the MSR if the only reason they had the MSR was because it carries that unique amount of cargo in the 100, 100 uh, level area, you know? This gives people an out from that ship and it's cheaper, right? Like you can melt that, buy a whole nother ship. Matter of fact, you could buy two Mark II CLs, I think, if I'm if I'm getting the price right. I think you could buy two of these for the cost of a MSR. But yeah, I, I just think people are looking at the Zeus and I think people are like obsessed with the ES and 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 um the 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 one with the the quantum dampener and all that and i don't think i don't think people are taking a serious look at the cl i think it's going to be one of the better cargo ships in the game and i think it has a tractor beam so yeah i think it's going to be i think this is going to be you know we talk a lot about like which cargo ship is going to be the 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 best or the, the most common cargo ship not necessarily the best but the most common cargo ship and i think the zeus is going to be one of the most common ones because most people aren't taking 2000 scu of cargo or or 576 or 96 it, nobody is not most people are not taking that much cargo at a certain point we will start to see that more often but i think in the very first year of the game most people you're gonna see this mark 2 cl out there and i think it's not only that it's a very awesome looking ship like it's one of the few few ships where I don't think I would need a skin for it. I love the way that skin looks. Maybe, I, maybe a little bit too too much on the yellow and black in the back, but but I still like it. Yeah. So that's the Mark II CL on the list. Then there's the Car Two Owl. So I said most of what I needed to say about the Car Two Owl in the uh, when I was talking about the Santok Yai. The Santok Yai and the Cartuwal, I think, are very underrated, but it's mainly because of their price. They are heavily overpriced, but I'm starting to lean less on the heavily and then just say they're overpriced, right? Like, they're not heavily overpriced. If you're talking about one of the fastest ships in the game, one of the most maneuverable ships in the game, then the Santok Yai starts to look less overpriced and more like appropriately priced but still slightly overpriced because it still should be like $30 less than what it is but I think when I reviewed it I th might have said it was 60 or $70 overpriced and I think that was maybe pushing it even too far because the more I look at it the more and the more I compare it to other ships as I do my reviews the more I'm like these are better than they appear to be and but here's the problem right now they're not better than they appear to be and that's because of in-game balancing and this is why i think master modes is going to drastically change the way we play the game i think these ships especially once the car two is like you know getting its wings blown off super easily thing once that goes away and we get armor online and stuff like that and it's harder to just pick a ship apart i think the car two while is going to be a solid solid ship and like I said, I prefer the way the Santok Yai looks a little bit more. Um, I also like the fact that Santok Yai has more guns than the Cartuol. I think this one should have two more guns, but I, I feel like you can't do that because of how maneuverable the ship is. It's insane how quick it moves. So, yeah, I, again, I think these ships are going to be over. I'm going to get one of these ships. I'm going to get one. Moving on, the Cutlass Blue. Now you might have got a little bit of a preview to this in I think my last video. I think I was saying something about how the Cutlass Blue was uh, insanely fast. I had no idea. I actually, I, so like I think Drake is like maybe not the next manufacturer, but they're, they're coming up soon. And as I was looking, I was like, man, I cannot wait to review the Cutlass Blue because I, I had no idea how fast it was, but I'm going in alphabetical order so that I don't play favorites, just so you know. But the Cutlass Blue is super fast, and I was looking for a super fast ship, so I had to do a little bit of a, like, I had to look at it a little bit because I was trying to compare it to the 400i and the MSR, and it turned out very quickly that I knew that I couldn't use the Cutlass Blue for what I needed to use it for, but I, I don't know enough about it. Even though it came out a while ago, I think it was 2018, 
they released there maybe 2019 that the colors blue came out i guess i just assumed i didn't need it because i'm not doing too much of the bounty hunter gameplay but it seems like it's a really good ship i need to i can't wait to review it that's how much I, that's what i'll say but i know it's underrated because i barely hear anybody talk about it i like as i watch at least 30 different star citizen youtubers i rarely ever hear anybody mention the colors blue and maybe it's because it's such an old ship it's five six years old but i feel like from what i've just on the surface level have seen about the colors blue it seems like it should be talked about more and i don't know if maybe it's just me and maybe i'm missing something maybe once i review it i'll see something and be like oh my god obviously that's why nobody's paying attention to it but the Cutlass series is fire regardless, right? Like, we all know that the Cutlass Black is one of the best ships in the game, like, bar none. If you have a Cutlass Black, it's solid for pretty much anything you want to do with it. But I, def I, I definitely have not taken a, a good look at the Cutlass Blue like I should have. And I think most people haven't, and that's why I included it on this list.